The Statement 40XW is one of our most ambitious projects to date. It's a very complex product with 40 drivers and a lot of steps to actually integrate it into the wall. Because of that, we wanted to provide this video guide to demystify this process and make it easier and more approachable. This video will outline all the steps necessary for customers and installers to put this product in your home. Statement is a 52 inch tall line source, which means we can control the sound wave and its launch into the room more precisely than a traditional point source product. By combining the benefits of both line source and control dispersion technology, we're able to focus the output of Statement 40XW onto the parts of the room that matter, which is where the audience is sitting. This way we can avoid the unwanted reflections that are caused by your floors, the ceiling, the walls, and get incredibly clear and detailed output exactly where you want it. You'll need to consider both the speaker's height on the wall and the distance between the speakers. The width and height of your room will be a determining factor, but the 40XW's 52 inch height means most seats will be well within the speaker's sweet spot. It's recommended that the distance between the speakers is equal to or up to twice the distance to the primary listening position. So if your speakers are placed 10 feet apart, optimal listening distance is between 10 and 20 feet away. Make sure the speakers are installed so the tweeters are on the inside. So the left speaker will have the tweeter row on the right and the right speaker will have the tweeter row on the left. The Statement 40XW comes in three separate boxes. These can be shipped in phases so that everything required to do the pre-installation is located in one shipment and everything required for final installation is located in another. You can also order an optional on-wall kit that will allow you to mount the speaker on the surface of the wall. The rest of this video assumes that you're completing the installation with the in-wall method. Box one and two contain everything you need for the pre-install. These are the parts that will arrive in box one and two. Make sure you specify the appropriate thickness for your install board. It comes in both half and five-eighths. If you plan on doing a five-eighths thickness sheetrock on your walls, you'll need to order the five-eighths kit. The goal here is to couple the back box securely in your wall. The back box enclosure gives a controlled airspace for your speakers, which means that your speaker will provide the best output no matter the wall it's installed in. Plus, it's sealed, which helps to contain the sound from leaking through the other side of the wall. Grab one of the two brackets first. Use one of the mounting brackets as a gauge to make sure that nothing will interfere with the back box's chosen installation location. Mark the placement of the bottom bracket on the wall stud. Attach the bracket here. Apply the spacer to the top of the bracket. So squeeze on this to make sure it's set, and then you can leave the backer on the tape on the top and just leave it as cushioning. If you plan on doing a double layer of sheetrock, lay down your first layer of sheetrock except for the stud bay that you plan on installing the statement in, and then perform the exact same steps that we've illustrated here over that first layer of sheetrock. And essentially what you're doing is using that first layer of sheetrock as a shim to shim out the install board so the final assembly is level with the second layer of sheetrock. Depending on the number of statements being installed, use a laser level to make sure that they're all installed at the same height, aligning all of the bottom brackets. Confirm the orientation of the back box according to the diagram on the position board. LC up for the left channel, RC up for the right. Before putting it into the wall, seat the remaining bracket on top of the back box. Lift the back box and seat it into the bottom bracket. Carefully push the back box into the stud bay. 
Make sure the top bracket can sit flush against the studs, just like the bottom bracket. While a helper holds the back box firmly in place, secure the bracket to the studs with the four supplied wood screws. Now you can connect the speaker wire to the binding post. To make it easier to connect the speakers in either orientation, binding posts can be found at both the top and bottom of the speaker. Please make sure that you only connect to one set of these terminals. The Statement 40XW includes a piece of premium wallboard known as fiber rock. This material is typically stronger and more consistent than traditional sheetrock. The purpose of this board is to ensure that any irregularities or inconsistencies in the wall construction do not interfere with the look of the final installation. Before putting the install board on the back box, just take a second to check out these standoff brackets and move this screw back and forth and see if you can see the standoff bracket moving. And if you find one that's too tight, just take your Phillips screwdriver and loosen it up a little bit until it can move. Position the install board on the back box by seating the positioning brackets into the pockets on the positioning board. Make sure all the brackets touch the bottom of their pocket. Secure the install board to the studs through the 12 slots. So after you've screwed the standoff brackets to the framework, then you need to tighten all these adjustment blocks. So while you're doing that, you need to push down the nearest positioning brackets, so they're sitting flush at the bottom of their pocket. You can push while you tighten the nearest adjustment block. And just work your way down, and make sure this bracket is against its pocket, and tighten the adjustment block down. So after you've tightened all 12 adjustment blocks, wiggle the install board, and if you can see any of the positioning brackets still moving out of their pocket, just push it down and tighten the nearest adjustment block a little bit more. Attach the sheetrock clips in the recessed locations around the perimeter of the install board. Now you're ready to hang the sheetrock. You can either measure the opening around the install board and cut it out of the sheetrock panel, or hang the sheetrock panel first and cut an opening around the install board with a drywall saw. Just be sure to avoid the sheetrock clips. After you've secured the sheetrock to the studs as normal, drive a screw through the sheetrock into each of the sheetrock clips behind it. The surfaces of the sheetrock in the install board will not be even. The clips should force the sheetrock to bulge forward around the install board. Now snap off the drywall clip fingers. Tape the joints and slots of the sheetrock. You'll want to use mesh sheetrock tape, not paper tape.
Apply joint compound to the install board. Keep in mind the sheetrock will be slightly raised from the install board surface. Apply joint compound to the face of the install board and bring it level with the sheetrock. Make sure to fill in the connecting sheetrock joints. After the compound is cured, sand it smooth. Make sure when applying your next coat of lightweight sheetrock mud to float this coat out further than the previous joint compound coat and create a smooth, gradual transition between the install area and the rest of the wall. After this coat is cured, do final sanding and touch up as needed. The metal face of the install board must be exposed, so sand this area free of sheetrock mud buildup. At this point, your wall is ready for paint, so for those desiring a color-matched grill to match the accent of the wall, we've included an extra scrim in box three, which is where you'll find the grill. So at this point, you'd want to get the grill out of box three, go ahead and get it painted to match your wall, and set it aside for final assembly later.